And now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoffy Hour represent Brian Hoffy and Plastic. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoffy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour starts in four, three, two. Happy, happy, happy. This is Happy Hour with Happy. Ah. Uh. Doubt it. Never worry about the dollar. No. Need a source or trending topic. Yeah. We the hottest. Search about us. Competition yeah. microscopic. Never copied. I'm have. a giant rolling weed up. Now we flying. Oh. H O P P E. H O P P E. H O P P E. You already know how we are in the system. Uh. Mm-hmm. You hear that new intro, baby? That is from Courtney Brown, a.k.a. KB The Great, and CJ Beats NYC. We made that about three months ago, and that's me going on the radio. I don't know if you could tell, but right here. I'm in a rap song. So proud of this. What's going on? That's me. PPE. PPE. Ah, this is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. If you want to leave me a message to have your show, have your voice rather be played on my show, that's what I meant to say, 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. We are live from the Personify Studios in St. Petersburg. Brought to you by my good friend and mentor, Topher Morrison. It's on my social media, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Because I have this rule on here that I don't really record my show video-wise because it takes away from the product. I market myself through my voice. So if you want to see it, it's on my social media, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Now... I have to be careful about how I talk about this next subject because I don't want to really piss anybody off or make anybody butthurt. But last week, actually this time last week, was National Radio Day. Woohoo! A business that's barely catering to anybody under 25. Woohoo! And you know what everybody did on National Radio Day? Was they posted their resume of, oh, I worked here. I worked here. And that's cool and all, but we need to have a discussion about radio. Right now, I'm doing a podcast, and it's heard on Podcast Radio US throughout the day Mm -hmm. in seven markets, but nobody cares. Nobody went, oh my God, you worked at 25 stations since since 1982? (laughs) Congratulations. We're so proud of you. You've been voice tracking since 1980. I'm just saying. I didn't want to post that as a status because I didn't want to piss off the boomer radio hosts. I celebrated National Radio Day by hanging out with my hero, Eddie Volkman, formerly of the Eddie and Jobo show, and I didn't really brag about it, but I just did. All right, let's get to the content. No! Happy Hot Topic! What the hell's going on with Subway? Somewhere I haven't been in seven years. Now to the latest salvo in the fast food war. Subway announcing a new foot-long deal in an effort to win more customers frustrated by high food costs. ABC's Faith Abube joins us with those details. Good morning, Faith. Hey, baby. Hey, good morning. I love how AI can make music in two seconds, but this five-second delay on these TV networks, they can't figure out. (laughs) And TV networks are like, why are we dying? Because of things like this. Faith. Hey. 
Hey, good morning to you, Mary. Nothing says back to school quite like the fast food chains fighting for your business as your schedule gets busier. And that means a small win for consumers who are just tired of rising menu prices. Looking for a reason to try the new $5 meal deal at McDonald's? The $5 meal deal is so insulting to anybody that remembers the 90s through early 2010s when everything was a dollar. Well, you get five pieces of McNuggets and a burger and a small fry and a drink. Woo! Ridiculous. It's so insulting. The fast food joints think we don't remember when things were affordable. I'll eat at home. And guess what? Ever since inflation has happened and everything's gone up, I've lost weight because I'm not going out to eat for seven bucks. This morning, the value meal wars heating up as the fast food sticker shock goes viral on social media. Eighteen ninety one. I was the first one to complain about McDonald's prices. I believe my post got 100,000 comments and 70,000 likes and 4,000 shares. All these other TikTokers are copying me. For this? Budget-conscious foodies know. airing out their frustrations. Why is this $10? It used to be 5 Make it make sense. I really believe that, I'm not saying inflation's going to be over soon. I don't really know how that works. Uh, but I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think there's a happy medium where you don't have to make everything very expensive, but I think the companies are choosing to. But if you look at any drive through lane at any fast food place, if you would have gone to McDonald's at 1 p.m. in the afternoon in 2019, it was packed. If you drive by any McDonald's, there's like four cars. Data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics confirming their reality. The consumer price index in March showing fast food cost nearly 33% more than it did in 2019. Told you. Consumers now have to make a choice between, you know, cooking at home, or eating out at their favorite fast food restaurants. I love eating out. And so fast food restaurants now are trying to make it more affordable to decide to work with them. But it's stupid because it was always affordable until recently. They got this high and mighty. Okay, I am a big guy. I'm six foot nine. So it takes a lot to fill me up. It was $22 to get a large or a double filet of fish and a 20 piece McNugget and a large fry. It was $22 fast food giants McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, and Taco Bell already launching their own value meal deals. And now Subway, one of the world's largest chains with nearly 37,000 franchise locations, joining its competitors, hoping that it lures back inflation-weary customers. Until they go back to that era, which they're never going to because there was a pedophile, I'm not going to Subway. Instead of the long gone $5 foot long, starting Monday, Subway says it'll offer the popular menu item for $6.99, a steep discount for a limited time. Current I love how they say for a limited time. Like, yeah, people are, are going to go for that limited time and then they're going to move on. There's really no reason to get fast food in 2024. Only some locations sell the sandwiches for double that price. The company CEO writing, this new deal means our guests can get the sandwiches they crave at a great value. It sounds like such a demeaning like uh, quote to have. Like, they crave at a great value. It should have always been at a great value. Your Subway. For the price of a crappy Subway sandwich, if you live in Florida, you can get a pub sub for like three bucks less. I don't know who these fast food joints think they are, but ever since COVID, man, they just went like, oh, we're going to make prices go up exponentially. And then they're going to be like, why is nobody going to us? 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. This next headline is kind of scandalous. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Mm -hmm. Kelly Ripa has a few words for her daughter, Lola Consuelos. Uh -oh. After her and Mark Consuelos, 23-year-old daughter, posted a topless photo sunbathing to Instagram on... Well, she's not showing her nipples, so it's not really topless. August 22nd, the talk show host takes to the comments and proves she's not like the other moms. With Lola writing in the caption of the post, is this demure? Kelly responds with, it's very mindful. Yeah, a lot of other moms would actually, you know, try to tell their kids not to pimp themselves out. But you're Kelly Ripa, a talentless host that treats everybody like garbage and is known for having sex with your husband on every part of the house. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that you're not like telling your kid, put on some clothes. By the way, it's not topless. Like, I know she's not wearing a top, but when I think of topless, unless I see the areola, it's not topless. 
A nod to the popular TikTok trend started by influencer Jules Lebron. You see how I do my makeup for work? Very demure. Very Ugh. I'm not trying to sound old and rip into the Gen Z, but you're not impressive by using the word demure. You're putting on makeup. Whoa! Something people have done since the beginning of time. Whoa! You should be bowed down to. Get the hell out of here. Very mindful. In the series of images, one photo shows Lola rocking a bandana and not much else. But this whole thing of not much else, it's her laying down. You can't see anything. People don't even know what topless is. In 2004, there was Janet Jackson. That was topless. This is a topless. Meanwhile, in the second image, she's wearing a moss green bikini while laying on her stomach and tanning her back. And it's no surprise that Kelly wasn't bothered by her daughter's racy photo. It's not racy. And of course, she wouldn't be bothered by it. She's not showing anything. Britney Spears is more close to topless. As she and Mark regularly share thirst traps of one another on social media. What's the chance that they're swingers? This whole thing of them pimping themselves out, it's very bizarre to watch. In addition to their on-camera flirting. Back in April, the couple exclusively spoke to E! News about how their relationship has changed after 28 years of marriage now that they co-host Live with Kelly and Mark together. Does anybody watch that show? I've often said daytime TV is watched by nurses in the hospital, old people, people on welfare that don't want to work. And I, But I've never heard anybody go, I mean, you heard about Regis and Kelly and I guess Seacrest and Kelly, but I've never heard people go, oh my God, I watched Mark and Kelly today. Do you have any advice for celebrity couples on how to sustain a healthy, happy marriage in the public eye? Oh, uh, you know, I just feel like a, a good marriage comes from within and it doesn't yeah, it does. matter what business you're in. Um, if you're if you have a solid foundation at home, then your foundation is solid no matter what your job. Here's what I'm wondering. It goes two ways. Either Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos have a really good marriage or it's all a front like all the, uh, you know, pawn shops in St. Pete. Agreed. Okay. 100%. Yeah, he's definitely a whip. The way he's like, oh, great. Mm -hmm. You know, he had another opinion. That's my advice. Build your foundation. She's like, build your foundation. And he's like, I have a bunch of side chicks she doesn't know about. In the house. Like <laughs> As for their daughter, Lola has earned respect in her own right since graduating from New York University in 2023. It's got to be weird having them as parents because they're so open about their sex life. Like... I remember a few times growing up, like my dad would go into my mom's room when I'm sleeping for about 35 minutes because they slept in separate beds occasionally, which was weird. Um, and you're like, are they having sex? Yeah, but it's got to be weird when you have Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos openly going, oh yeah, we had sex on the pool table. Thanks to her beautiful voice and impressive online covers of hit songs. That's what every celebrity's kid wants to do. We're going to do covers of songs. And the thing is, they'll probably get far because of, um, what's the word called? Oh, yeah, nepotism, which also happens in Tampa Morning Radio. Recently, Kelly spoke to E! News about where her daughter draws her inspiration for her music career. Let me tell you something. The reason she is here tonight, she is here tonight. She came here to see Miley Cyrus. Oh, yeah, that's someone you should totally look up to. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm indifferent about Miley. I think she's kind of skanky. Because Miley Cyrus has been such a singular influence in her life. And Hannah Montana was such a huge show. And I liked Miley until she was like kind of having that weird hair and she was twerking on Rob and Thick. Everybody seems to kind of forget that. That was probably about 13 years ago around this time. Not 13, 11 years ago, 2013. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. This next headline is fascinating. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Stephen Baldwin is sharing his thoughts on baby Bieber. After his daughter Haley Bieber and her husband Justin Bieber welcomed their first baby together, a little boy named Jack Blues Bieber, Stephen is celebrating his family's newest arrival. I was in Chicago two weeks ago just about for my uncle's uh, funeral. And uh, well, but today's the 27th, so I was in Florida actually. It doesn't matter because you're listening to this in the future. I don't think Justin Bieber became be becoming a dad after he came. <laughs> Get it? Uh, I don't think Justin Bieber uh, becoming a dad has been discussed enough. I, I didn't know that. And I would like to say I'm pretty up to date on celebrity news. 
I didn't know he had a kid. I mean, I knew that she was pregnant, but I think like 10 years ago, it would have been a bigger deal. In response to a message shared to X, formerly Twitter, by Justin's mother. You guys can stop saying X, formerly Twitter. Everybody knows that that scumbag known as Elon Musk bought Twitter. We all know. Nobody goes, oh, really? I, I didn't know. They're Patty Millett, which reads, congratulations, Justin Bieber and Haley. I love you forever, baby Jack. Steven writes on August 23rd, quote, amen. Congratulations to you and may God continue to bless our family. Oh yeah. Where was God when uh, Helena Hudgens got shot by your brother? Where was God then? I love when the rich and elite name drop God. Jack's arrival comes three months after Haley and Justin first shared they were expecting with the world. The Road Beauty founder was already six months into her pregnancy journey when they made the announcement. They deliberately kept her pregnancy a secret to maintain privacy. Yeah, I will say one thing about Justin Bieber. He was a complete asswipe between 10 to 15 years ago. In the last five years, he's been really low key. I admire it. In an interview with W Magazine published July 23rd, Haley explains why, saying, quote, in the beginning, it was super emotional for me. Like, I love. Whoa, having a kid's emotional? You don't say this human so much how can i possibly bring someone else into this i'm trying to soak in these days of it being justin and me just the two of us she adds i probably could have hit it until the end but i didn't enjoy the stress of not being able to enjoy my pregnancy outwardly yeah that has to be weird you're wearing big ass clothes walking around um by the way i think it's very undiscussed that um she was the side chick and he was having a hard time. Justin Bieber was figuring out if he wanted to be with Selena Gomez or her. Mm -hmm. Never forget. I felt like I was hiding this big secret and it didn't feel good. I wanted the freedom to go out and live my life. That's the sad part is it's not really our business. I know you're famous and you're getting talked about on TMZ and shows like Happy Hour. But at the same time, it's like this whole idea that... I wanted my freedom. Who cares? We're all trying to pay our bills and live life. Nobody's going, oh my God, Haley's pregnant? No way. Like we're talking about it, but you could have told us we didn't care. That's you thinking as a narcissist that everybody's bowing down to Haley. Oh my God, you're pregnant. No way. On August 23rd, the pair shared a photo of Jack's little foot, which Justin captioned, welcome home. Steven isn't the only one among the couple's friends and family who are thrilled by the news. Kylie Jenner writes on the couple's post, quote, I can't handle this little foot, Jack Blues. All right. I don't know if you guys know, I even have production about this joke, but I got a vasectomy, so I'm never having kids, so... Did you know that Ryan Hoppy got a vasectomy? Yeah. Well, now you know, and we aren't even sure why we told you. I just did, because I love telling people. It makes people so uncomfortable. And guess what? I'm good at that. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Mm-hmm. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. We are live from the Personify Studios in St. Petersburg, brought to you by Topher Morrison. And um, like I say in each time i play a commercial break if you don't feel like listening to this song because you might not be into rap music my middle-aged audience doesn't like rap music my gen z does so you can skip forward four minutes but here is sound master t with droked out Blame. 
Malaysia, nothing is gonna save ya. Hits on the streets, hits on the beats. If you wanna bounce, best bet, report to me. My city, shot town where I put it down. Ain't no limit, dropping beats by the pound. I balls out a lot, cause you know I call the shots. Stacking paper like them baking sodas in the pot. We got the remedy. It's a gator thing. Tell them how we do it, Joe. Gator, gator wants real. They're spinning, and I ain't even driving. I'm just parking lot pimping. Slide off in the club, finna manage in the tipsy. So fresh, so clean. Got a swagger in my lip, and what it is? What it is? What it do? What it do? Come on, shout it. Let me see you get loose. If you buy it, you can get some great goo. In VIP, I'm put my hands on you. We got the remix. Drinks on you, all eyes on me And niggas with me drinking dumb Any mix with Remy Ma Party going all night When we kick it, kick it hard Niggas get they smoke out They be getting choked out Mix it with some liquor, nigga We be getting choked out You know that we're getting droked out. All righty. Absolutely, positively, enough of that. We have so much to get into. Happy hour will be right back. But first, this following segment has been brought to you by Mike Janine, Kava, and Kratom. When I tell you that it is the absolute best in the world, I'm a man of my words. M-I-T-R-A-9.com And at checkout, use keyword Hoppy, H-O-P-P-E to save 20%. Happy hour. Happy hour. If a Chicago accent and Florida man went on a wild weekend and ended up with a kid, it would be Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Ryan's tall like the sky. For nine, he's fly From Chicago to the Bay In St. Pete, he'll stay Talk of love and fame Oh, yeah Dating life's his game You know it is News on stars he spills Tell me about it With laughter fills Happy hour, all you need Got it Rich and Ely, take a seat Yeah, bitch Ryan's got the groove Happy hour makes you move Ah, Suno.com A cat by the side Makes songs in two seconds Before they reside 856 
49 Hoppy. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. I see this here. We got some headlines to get into. But first. Famous economist who predicted 2008 recession issues very grim warning over the future of the U.S. economy. Duh. I'm not going to even read the article. I really believe that these sociopathic boomers and all the people that are in charge of all the money in the world want everything to crash. I'm not saying it's not going to crash, and I'm not saying it is going to crash. But you never hear somebody go, hey, if we do this and this, maybe we can avoid the crash. Do you know what I'm saying? It's always, it's going to crash. It's going to crash. Like words are energy. And if you maybe try to prevent it and talk about how we can do things to make it not happen, like having $14 Subway sandwiches, then maybe things wouldn't be so bad. I don't know. Just me. I'm not Jim Cramer or Dave Ramsey. I'm not a boomer that makes up rules about money. But I'm just telling you, it's when you put out the energy out there, things are going to suck. Things are going to suck. Things will suck. Mm-hmm. Family who left Mariah Carey traumatized for life, drugged and pimped out by her sister, age 12, satanic sex cult claims, and an opera singer mother jealous of her career. I've always kind of thought, because her sister and her mom died on the same day, that being Mariah Carey, I always saw Mariah Carey was kind of a bitch, but now I kind of get it. I didn't know she had a bad childhood. Now I kind of get why she's the way she is. When Mariah Carey shared the heartbreaking news that her mom, Patricia, 87, and her troubled sister, 63, passed away, uh, her name, Allison, on the same day, it was the end of a particularly painful era for the singer, who finally lay a decades-long feud with her siblings to rest. Mariah Carey seems like that type of person that would have a decade-long feud with her family. The great sadness is that they never managed to repair their relationship, who said she felt blessed to have spent the last week with her mom before she had passed. She admitted that she is going through an impossible time, but it's unlikely that the legendary singer 55 will turn to her older brother Morgan. Yeah, it just seems like everything Mariah Carey does. Yeah, she's a very talented person, but that whole we belong together and always be my baby, it's all an act, just like Jennifer Lopez. It's all a joke. In recent years, the star has opened up about her complex family relationships, admitted she had cut off contact with both her siblings because it was emotionally and physically safer for her. No, you're hiding because you don't want to have any confrontation. You're essentially a female Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? Everything's about you. You're super talented. You're the big name in the family. Maybe your family rides your clout a little bit. Not the only time you ride things like Nick Cannon. But at the same time, it's like, you don't have a relationship with your family. It's sad. Like at my uncle's funeral two weeks ago, there were family members that hadn't seen each other in six years. And did everybody get along at every single moment of the five days I was in Illinois? Absolutely, positively not. But everybody was cordial. Some whiskey was involved to make everybody get along. But hey, you know, anything's possible. I also see this here. <laughs> this is the most Florida headline of all time. A lot of times I'll see Florida headlines. It's like, man wrestles with an alligator while two-year-old babies on his back. And I'm like, what am I going to do with that? Every morning radio show, Dave and Chuck the Freak, shows that are full of nepotism. They got a job because of their dad. They do like Florida news segments. Woo, riveting, innovative. But occasionally I'll see a Florida headline that I go, I cannot talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> and this right here is your typical happy hour headline. Moment Florida woman is arrested for having lesbian, th lesbian threesome in pool in front of kids with her mom then kissing her as she is arrested by cops. Shocking body cam footage shows the moment a Florida woman is arrested after she allegedly engaged in a lesbian threesome in a public pool in front of children. The woman who told officers her name was Juliana. Yeah, that's a good name. Was seen getting a kiss on the cheek from her mom before she was taken to jail on June 14th, 2023. 
This is a year ago. How did this just come out now? Body cam footage of the incident emerged for the first time last week. Juliana and her two friends who fled the scene before cops arrived were allegedly seen naked in the pool having oral sex with each other other than with each other at an unidentified housing complex in St. Lucie, Florida. And employee took pictures of the woman in the act after a worried mother informed him of what was allegedly taking place. When officers from the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office arrived, Juliana was arrested. Her baffled boyfriend, whom she lived with at the complex, was left speechless. Yeah, he's like out at work doing his thing and she's having a threesome and he's not even involved and it's public? The bizarre incident started when cops pulled up to the complex and talked to a blonde woman who said she was the property manager. Yeah. He is seen approaching her car as she's shown images of the woman that were seen that were sent to her by an employee. The officers then drove his car further into the complex as Juliana, dressed in a black one piece, shorts and long red braids, walked towards her. He asked her, Y'all just come from the pool? She scratched her head and said no and walked away from him. <laughs> the officer then asked her to come back as she continued to walk towards an ice cream truck. <laughs> he followed her and said, okay, so then you want to get arrested, huh? And she said, arrested for what? While screaming. She continues to repeat the question as the officer grabbed her arms, placed them behind her back, and attached handcuffs to her wrist. I'm here to do an investigation. I told you to come here, he said to her. And she goes, arrested for what? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is absolutely, positively chaos, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm not really into public sex, you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of into the whole doing it behind closed doors. I don't even get people to go to sex clubs. Oh, by the way, before I get to this clip, I have a little bit of the officer and the woman. Mm -hmm. First of all, the headline, I'm all over the place, but first of all, the headline says, here's why you shouldn't have oral sex in a, in a public place, and they put S asterisk X in the name of the YouTube video. Is that how wussified we have become as an algorithm that we have to censor the word sex? Ridiculous. It's driving me nuts. Murder, violence, death. All these words are getting censored with an asterisk. I'm like, is that how wussified we've become? Second point with my ADHD, I heard about this business in the Tampa Bay area. Now, whenever guys talk about going to gentlemen's clubs or massage parlors and they say they heard about it, a lot of times they've gone there and they haven't actually been there, but um, but they actually have been there. I actually haven't been to this place that I'm about to name drop, but I heard about it at a Kava bar. It's called the Six Shops. Mm -hmm. There's no Google location of it. But it's in the Bay Area, and you can get whatever the hell you want there. I heard about it today. I was like, my God, what the hell is going on in Florida? Like, you don't realize how crazy Florida is until you go to Illinois, and everyone's boring and eating pizza and drinking beer. All right. Here is the clip of the officer and the woman. They're over here in the pool eating each other out, bro, in front of you. <laughs> uh, right from the beginning, it's great. They're over here in the pool eating each other out, bro, in front of kids. I got pictures of them. So that's a wrap, man. All right. On June 14th, 2023, officers were called to an apartment complex regarding three women who got caught having oral sex in the pool. Was it just uh, you guys out there? Or? Uh, we were walking by. You were just walking by. Yeah, walking by. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? You're just walking by a pool and you think like Brazzers is there? Okay. Where's the bang bus? Do you, uh, I mean, if I, you know, catch them in the act or something, do you, do you want to, like, press charges as victims or? That's what they're doing. I'm the property manager. Are you? I'm the property manager and I haven't been late in 10 years and this pisses me off. So who, did they witness it or? We walked past me. Oh, there's been kids. There's kids that live right up above it. Her maintenance uh, tech. Yeah, all those kids that are probably like under 12 are all at home. Like, mom, so I saw this girl using her tongue in this weird place. And they're all like making Salisbury steak in the uh, microwave. And they're like, what the hell do I say to this? Guy has his kids and he just sent it and said it needs to get taken care of. They're like, oh, that's weird. Y'all are taking pictures. Of us. It's just weird you're in broad daylight. Yeah. Like, you're just stupid. Now get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <gasps> I just need 
if there's a victim or if am I just yeah I mean there's victims of the people watching the threesome but I think the three women hooking up are probably not viewing themselves as victims they're more criminals alright this video goes on oh jeez it keeps talking. This video goes on for 22 more minutes. I will tweet it out at Ryan Hoppy Radio. <laughs> oh, Florida. There's absolutely no morals here. Like, I'm not saying there's not moral people, but even the moral people don't have morals down here. There's just this weird vibe about Florida, man. I can't put my words into it, you know? Here's what I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I go to Illinois, and every girl, I didn't even go on Bumble this year, but last year when I was on Bumble in Illinois for the five days I was there, every girl was like, oh my God, I am looking for a relationship, and that's all I'm looking for. Down here, after four messages, a girl can be like, here's my address, knock when you arrive. I'm not kidding. If it wasn't for dating apps and my incredible height, I don't think my body count would be as high. I don't think I would be as blessed. And I didn't realize that until recently. I have some friends that are short. Mm-hmm. Like I'm talking five, four short. And all they talk about is my height. The one moment I realized that I was a tall person was when I was at the airport and I saw this guy named, uh, I forget the name of the NBA player. I think it was like Jim Henson or something. And he played for the Milwaukee Bucks and he was at O'Hare Airport like maybe nine years ago. And he was like 7'1". And I was like, oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm looking up to him right now. And that's how everyone views me at all times. Happy hour. Happy hour. It's time for Hoppy in the morning. Ryan Happy Radio.com. Happy hour will be right back. So, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip forward four minutes. But here is a legendary song. Mm-hmm. 11 years ago. It's featuring gunplay little way and rick little wayne and rick ross if you listen to music radio and they introduce a song it's all perfectly edited where it's like hey we got this song coming up and they all voice tracking i'm never perfect a day in my life but i do play good music here is gunplay with uh kush little wayne and rick ross made that music mary jane fly mary mary jane fly mary jane Turnpike on some real shit, I'm a pothead Please don't blow my high, man Look into my eyes and It look like I'm from Thailand I am smoking on that gas Life should be on Cinemax Smoking on that OG and that double R I'm real relaxed I smoke so much kill, they call me killer Man, I'm on that strong, I'm on that strong Bodybuilder Like that shit and pass it My white girl on that acid But me, I'm on that kush That kush don't you? And I got a big bouquet of Mary Jane's flowers. Yeah, Mary Jane's flowers. Mary, Mary Jane's flowers. Don't play fuck with me. And I got a big bouquet of Mary Jane's flowers. Mary Jane's flowers. Mary, Mary Jane's flowers. That kush. That, that kush. That kush. That kush. That kush. That kush. That kush. That, that kush. That kush. That, that kush. That kush. Mary Jane's flowers. Bottle, big bubble bouquet, and by the look at my paint, man, it's a wonderful spray. Sucker trying to fuck my high up on a sucker free day. I told that sucker park your whip, cause this a sucker free lane. Harry Hoover, Hussein, kick ass weed, Wu Tang. Bees for big on the Bentley, can't squeeze through lanes. Raw papers in Jamaica, eat some Aggie Roller Acre. I be hippie blitz, trippy sticks, activate the vapors. And this anthrax wax, give you ass. 
that's my tax I'm a smoker, use a choker, gone and pass that back Lighting weed, that's my dope style Eyes lower than my profile This ain't hit your lung, your car both out Pushing the swisher, couldn't be sweeter. I'm talking P80 mine, the TAC off the meter. I spark them up in the theater. Huh. Clouds so thick, heavy on real estate. House your bitch, black bottle for boss. I'm burning like Biggie, Bob Marley and Ziggy. My niggas, we run the city. It's a very thin line, you can candy paint mine. mine. All I want is Chevy's and the best cause I can find. 60 in the bank, another hundred on my mind When we started out with Reggie, we were barely getting dimes We were barely getting dimes Now all we fuck is dimes Got it. Oh, we know. Tell you, man. Happy hour will be right back. What is it? Happy hour will be right back. All right, Lil Wayne, we got it. Y'all like marijuana? Happy hour will be right back. Mm -hmm. This following segment has been brought to you by the best Delta 8 CBD honey around at DZBZHoney.com. You get lollipop, l- 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 lick the lollipop, the rapper. You can get honey sticks and a jar of honey that have Delta 8 and CBD in it at DZBZHoney.com. And when you go there and at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, you can save 20%. Did you know Ryan Hoppy is bipolar? He loves it. No, he hates it. He loves it. No, he hates it. Get what we did there. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. I got a new song for you guys. You want to hear it? I didn't make it. I found it on a website. Ladies, here's another cautionary tale. Don't listen to me and your marriage might fail. If you and your man get into a quarrel, mm. calm him down with a little bit of oil. You know it isn't gonna suck itself. No, so no. get on your knees and... I might have this as my favorite song on Bumble. And give it some help. Put it in your mouth or lickety split. It's up to you if you swallow or if you spit. All righty. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. I was going to play more of it, but I realized that this is a family show. Not at all. I realized the kids listen to the show. Not at all. It's an adult show. Mm-hmm. I'm not ashamed of it. But um, I don't realize how dirty my show is until I go home and hang out with a bunch of Roman Catholics in Illinois, and I go, I'm a little dirty. No! Happy Hot Topic! What the hell is going on in Seattle besides crime, suicide, and a lot of coffee? 
Things are slowly getting back to normal at Seattle's airport this morning Mm -hmm. after a cyber attack on Saturday that led to dozens of flight delays and cancellations. That sucks. The cyber attack took down several critical systems, including the Internet, email and phone systems. It seems to be a more common occurrence and everybody's just sweeping it under the rug. In the Port of Seattle website, the outages left passengers waiting in extra long lines. No word this morning on who might be responsible for the attack. Yeah, they probably won't figure out who did it. Mm-hmm. Because these hackers are getting really good at their job. They're getting really good at getting away with it. I'm just saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, first, all these social security numbers are getting released. But the rich and elite, you know, don't talk about it. They don't talk about it in their presidential debates or campaigns. They're not saying, we're going to protect your identity. They just, you know, put in side chick Kamala Harris without earning anything. And then creepy Trump, who no one wants to talk about people on the right, that he hung out with Jeffrey Epstein. But hey, at least we have the Hawk Tua girl. Mm-hmm. Speaking of politics. There's been all this fallout from the Secret Service, of course, after the assassination attempt last month. You were there. That- Whoa, somebody from the liberal media, that being the Today Show and the NBC, called it an assassination attempt. Good job. Because you had like the Denver Post or whatever the name of that newspaper is saying like shot or whatever. but Or not shot, but they didn't use the word assassination. People in the liberal media were not using the word assassination, even though if, if it was Biden, they would have. So a round of applause to NBC for calling it what it is. There's been all this fallout from the Secret Service, of course, after the assassination attempt last month. You were there that day. What are you learning about what's happening to these agents? Mm. Yeah, Laura, that's right. Multiple Secret Service agents have now been put on leave for their actions leading up to and responding to that assassination attempt. I never knew what the Secret Service looked like, but I always imagined it as these big buff guys looking like Vin Diesel's character from Triple X. We don't know exactly how many and that number could grow, but we do know that one of them is a special agent in charge of the Pittsburgh field office who was responsible for coordinating with local law enforcement. Sounds a little sketchy. It kind of felt like that they didn't give Donald Trump the best security guards and three secret service because they didn't care about him. Like, I'm not saying a woman shouldn't be on the job, but you need a big, burly, um, butch woman. Mm-hmm. You don't need someone that looks like they go to Planet Fitness and sit around all day and take selfies. Laura. All right, Dasha Burns, thank you. You're quite welcome. 856 49 Happy. It's 856 494 6773. Speaking of politics, <laughs> whenever people on the right show emotion and cry, all of the liberals make fun of them. But then when people on the left do it, like Tim Walz's rich, spoiled kids, oh, we got to respect it. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Mm-hmm. Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you are my entire world. And I-, I know I'm a liar and I lie about everything, but hey, I'm going to get the kids involved to show my human side. Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you are my entire world. And I love you. And then his kids, "Ah, Daddy, you're so rich. You gave us a very splendid life. I'm not saying the kids crying is fake, but oh my goodness, all the liberals, it's so inspirational seeing rich kids crying for their father. (laughs) Beta male energy. Mm -hmm. It's okay to cry for your father, but when people on the right do it, like you had Kyle Rittenhouse crying in court or whatever, everybody on the left makes fun of it, and I'm sure people in the Trump family have cried, but when someone on their party does it, oh, we we gotta respect it. Can we just meet in the middle and realize it's all fake crying? Michelle Obama is standing up for Gus Walls after his viral support for dad Tim Walls at the 2024 Democratic National Convention. Gus made headlines for his heartwarming show of emotion as the vice presidential candidate delivered his speech at the Chicago event, appearing to mouth, that's my dad, while- We know it's your dad, unless your mom had an affair. Standing up to cheer Tim on through tears. Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you are my entire world, and I love you. I don't know why it just seems so fake. I'm not against them crying for their dad. It's a big moment. I get it. But there's something so fake about it. It just seems so fake. 
And the way he's clapping, he's like, yeah. It's almost like the face a dude makes when he wins his fantasy football league. Yeah. This means so much to me. It's so ungenuine. It's so fake. I'm letting you in. On how- Even his sister right next to him is like, bro, calm down. How we started a family. Yeah, because I had sex with their mom. That's how I started a family. I'm so inspirational. I'm a liar. Like every other politician. I'm Tim Walz. But when somebody who's liberal lies, everybody on the left defends it. But when somebody on the right lies all the time like Trump, the liberals rip into him. You don't see Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon or any of those late night hosts ripping into Tim Walz. Now do you? But if the Trump family would have cried, they would have all been talking about it. You're a bunch of kiss-ass leeches. Because this is a big part about what this election is about. What, the fact that Kamala Harris, I don't even know what her name is. I like saying it wrong. I call it Kamala, because I'm not voting. The fact that Kamala Harris was never getting a popular vote, but you just gave her the election because you guys made old man Biden and your elder abuse made him think he had a chance. Mm, you didn't earn diddly squat. Freedom. There are many f- High taxes and inflation. Woo, that's the definition of freedom. I love it. No, I don't. Found Gus's reaction moving. Others poking fun at the teen prompted swift backlash on social media. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't make fun of the kid, but I've seen people, for example, for example, when Baron Trump turned 18, these people from MSNBC were saying he's fair game. But if Tim Wallace's kid, I don't know the age, but if he turned 18 and somebody on the right said that, then it would say, no, that's, that's mean. It's pathetic. All you. As the former first lady also spoke out. Michelle shared a now iconic photo of Gus and Tim hugging on stage as Tim's wife Gwen and daughter Hope look on. And Michelle praised the family for sharing such an inspiring personal look at their bond, writing on Instagram, I was touched to see Gus Walls' joy when his dad, Tim Walls, took the stage last night. Thankful for you showing us all what real love looks like, Gus. Let's be a nation that embraces this kind of warmth and vulnerability instead of making fun or mocking it. We could all use some of Gus's example in our own lives. No one knows that better than Tim and Gwen. The Minnesota governor and his wife recently issued an exclusive statement to People magazine about discovering how Gus's neurodivergence, which includes ADHD and a nonverbal learning disorder, all to- That's what I have. We have something in common. Mm-hmm. ...make him stronger, saying in part, like so many American families, it took us time to figure out how to make sure we did everything we could to make sure Gus would be set up for success as he was growing up. It took time, but what became so immediately clear to us was that Gus's condition is not a setback. It's his secret power. Setback. I have ADHD and nonverbal, and I don't even accept it. I have it. I keep working. I hate when people who have disabilities that they talk about. Yeah, I have nonverbal learning disability. I can't read like facial expressions, which is kind of a problem when you're on dates. But what I'm saying to you is I can't read like hand motions. But I still grind. I, I don't use that as like a, oh, I've overcome so much. I have a disability. Who cares? I despise when people use it as something that we should be proud of. Whoa, you have ADHD? Good for you. You have nonverbal learning disability? Good for you. A lot of people do. It's not that impressive. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 856-49-HOPPY. Speaking of politics, this headline's spicy. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Mahomes has a message for the haters. The 28-year-old who announced she's a... That would be uh, Brittany Mahomes. Brittany Mahomes has a message for the haters. The 28-year-old who announced she's expecting her third baby with husband Patrick Mahomes in July recently shares a cryptic message to her Instagram story slamming critics for their negative comments. Brittany Mahomes cares too much. This whole family, no wonder Patrick Mahomes, a lot of people think he's the greatest of all time. His loser father literally got away with his third DUI and was put on probation. Mm -hmm. That pissed me off, by the way. 
Literally, what a disgrace. If any other person got their third DUI in Texas, they're sent to jail. But oh, you're the father. You're a former MLB pitcher, and you're the father of Patrick Mahomes. We should give you whatever you want. Kiss my ass. And then you have Brittany Mahomes acting like, oh, I, I want to clap back at the haters. I'm taking a play out of the John Legend, Chrissy Teigen playbook, clapping back at the haters. You're thin skinned because you know that you're a douche. Writing, I mean, honestly, to be a hater as an adult, you have to have some deep rooted issues you refuse to heal from childhood. Whoa, Brittany Mahomes, thank you for the inspiration. You should begin your own life advice podcast. That was some really deep advice. There's no reason your brain is fully developed and you hate to see others doing well. And while she does not reveal who the note was aimed at, it's not the first time Britney has clapped back at the haters. She cares way too much. I feel like Patrick is afraid to scold his family because you had his brother getting a char- getting accused of sexual assault. You had his mom wearing a jersey that said baby or said QB maker. You have the dad getting DUIs all the time and always being drunk wherever he is. Then you have Brittany Mahomes. What a fan. Back in December, the 28-year-old, who shares daughter Sterling and son Patrick Bronze with her husband, also spoke out on the increase in negative comments she's received since Taylor Swift started dating her husband's teammate, Travis Kelsey. And guess what? When you address the mean comments, they're just going to come more and more, Brittany, if you maybe ignore it and pretend like it doesn't exist. Maybe it won't happen. Whoa, what a concept. Recently, there has been a lot more rude ass people on here, mm-hmm. way more than normal. Noting that she doesn't quote, know where y'all came from, Brittany adds, you should probably go back to where you came from, please. What does that even mean? Weirdo. And Brittany doesn't only take a stand when it comes to protecting her own peace, she also speaks out for others. Following Caitlin Clark's heightened public scrutiny during her first season on the WNBA's Indiana Fever, Brittany came to her defense. Caitlin Clark, keep doing your thing. You're a baller, and it's incredible to see what you're doing for the game and women's sports. Yeah, yeah, Brittany Mahomes, that probably didn't even know who she was last year. But let me jump on the Caitlin Clark uh, train, because I'm such a kiss ass and such a clout chaser. I'm probably a good mom and a good wife, but my God, public. As a celebrity, I'm insufferable. And of course, Britney has people who will stick up for her as well. With Patrick Mahomes previously telling E! News that he understands where her instinct to call out trolls comes from. She was an athlete growing up. If you played any sports, you know there are as many people that enjoy how you play and the effort that you give as people that are always going to hate on you. Wow, you are whipped, Patrick. No, it's your wife's riding your clout, and she's riding you and getting pregnant. And so she has a good sense of that. Yeah, she does. It's called being a clout chaser. She saw at age 16 that you were either going to be really good at baseball or really good at football, and she's like, jackpot. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Now, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip forward four minutes and 26 seconds. But here is Kid Cuddy and Rich Hill, not the former baseball pitcher with Trippy. Mm hmm. Let 
it in my soul, oh, oh, oh. feel it in my mind, feel it in my heart, feel it in my soul, oh, oh, oh. feel it in my world, feel it in my space, feel it in my life, my life, feel it in my minds, I'm in trippy in my eyes, I'm in trippy in my eyes, tell me have you gone, trippy, trippy, have you gone, trippy, trippy, have you gone, trippy, trippy, have you gone? Jippy, have you gone? Jippy, jippy, have you gone? Oh, oh, oh. Tell me, have you gone? Jippy, jippy, have you gone? Jippy, jippy, have you gone? Oh, oh, oh. Tell me, have you gone? Jippy, jippy, have you gone? Jippy, jippy, have you gone? Oh, oh, oh. I can't see the sun if it doesn't come through my shit. Trippy, trippy, trippy. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, sure. This following segment has been brought to you by Fortify.com. F O R T I F E Y E.com. And at checkout, use keyword Hoppy, H O P P E, actually keyword Ryan20, R Y A N20, to save 20% on the best pre and post workout in all of the world. Mm-hmm. F O R T I F E Y E.com. Use keyword Ryan20. This is also being brought to you by Amir, Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. When I tell you that they are the best MMA trainer in all of the Tampa Bay area, I'm a man of my words. Amiracademy.com. Mm-hmm. This is also being brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barber Shop at richkbarber.com. When I tell you that he is the best barber, he always makes me look handsome. He is the absolute best. He is at Salon Loft on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. Sign up at richkbarber.com and save 10 bucks on every haircut when you mention happy hour. This is also being brought to you by Wes chaseprinting.com the best printing company in all the bay area counseling on call.net if you live in maryland or florida and you need to get your mental health checked out go to counseling on call.net and tell them i sent you we're going to come back on happy hour and keep this party going happy hour happy hour Happy hour, time to laugh with Ryan's power. Wacky fun and silly jokes. Happy hour loves his folks. Happy hour, happy hour with Ryan Happy. 
Yeah, he's the topper. Grab your drinks and join the crew. Crazy stories just for you. Ryan's here to make you grin. Let the hoppy fun begin. The hoppy hour. Hoppy hour. With Ryan Hoppy. Last but never sloppy. Got your popcorn, got your drink. Turn it up and don't you blink. Oh, yeah. 856. 49 Hoppy, 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. All right, I see this here. Jerry Jones brags about being the only fit to be general manager of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this guy, I can't even imagine being a Cowboys fan. Must drive you absolutely, positively nuts. Happy hour. Happy hour. Jerry Jones said this. And no, this is not a parody account. Hell no. There's nobody that could effing come in and be the better GM. Uh, everybody could be, but you. He goes on to say, the reason I don't let somebody else be the GM is because I don't have anybody that I will let do it to actually do it right. Buddy, you barely won any playoff series in this uh, whole century. In this whole millennium, and the last time you won a Super Bowl, I was three years old. You're kind of a scumbag. You're living off the past, and you make a lot of funny because you got a lot of dumb fans that think things are going to get better. And guess what? They won't. And every Cowboys fan every year is like, this is our year. This is our It's never going to be our year, guys. You suck. <laughs> Watch it be the year. Not at all. Dak Prescott's never winning anything. Man 34 suffers cardiac arrest triggered by drinking daily Red Bull. Uh, if it would have said Man 30, you might think it's me. <laughs> ben Affleck, 52, is hanging out with RFK Jr.'s daughter, Kick Kennedy. Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder how RFK feels about that. I'm the biggest sellout ever. I said I was going to run for president. And then when I realized I had absolutely no chance, I just endorsed Trump like a wimp. And his wife is mad at him. Probably not the first time she's been really mad at him. He seems like he'd be an insufferable husband. I understand the guy had a stroke. But he has the most annoying voice ever. Mm-hmm. Sounds like morning radio host in Tampa Bay with that tough guy voice. I am Robert F. Kennedy. Mike Counter. 856 49 Happy 856 494 6773. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! This next headline is fascinating. Judge Mathis and his wife Linda are calling it quits yeah. after 39 years of marriage. That sucks. Linda Yvette Mathis, the now estranged wife of the... I wonder what it's like being married for 39 years and then just calling it quits. Like, you're close to death. Just ride it out. TV judge, whose full name is Gregory Ellis Mathis Sr., files for divorce on August 22nd, mm -hmm. according to court documents obtained by E! News. He was always my favorite uh, daytime judge. He's such a badass, and he's from Chicago. And guess what? I don't know if you could tell by my accent, but I'm from Chicago, and when we're from Chicago, we're proud of things from Chicago. After tying the knot in mm -hmm. June 1985 yeah. and welcoming four children, Linda notes that they separated on July 17th. Yeah. As for the cause behind the split, Linda lists irreconcilable differences in the documents. Who cheated? Additionally, Linda is also seeking spousal support from Gregory. Of course you did. That's why you married him. And requesting that her requirement of spousal support be waived. Yeah, he probably uh, should have just written it out. He's going to have to give half his money. E! News has reached out to their reps for comment, but... It really is crazy how much of a rip-off marriage is for men. But ...has not yet heard back. They're not going to. Every time they say, oh, E! News or Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood reached out for comment. And guess what? There's never a comment! Judge Mathis appeared as a TV judge on his self-titled show for 24 years until 2023. Man, I have memories of... Taking the school bus at 2.50 and getting home at 3.25. My mom's watching Judge Mathis on WCIU, Channel 26, The U. Presiding over more than 13,000 cases. 
and his ruling days aren't over yet. Oh, wow. The judge revived his show with Mathis Court with Judge Mathis, which premiered last fall. Linda and Gregory initially met at Eastern Michigan University and dated for four years, before getting engaged and tying the knot. The exes share daughters Jade and Kamara, as well as sons Greg Jr. and Amir. Most recently, the entire family appeared together on the e-reality show Mathis Family Matters in 2022. Ah, that sucks. 856-49-HOPPY. <laughs> Speaking of divorce, we got this riveting headline. All right, here. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Angelina Jolie's dad, John Voight, is weighing in about her ongoing legal drama with Brad Pitt. In a new interview with Fox News Digital, the Academy Award winner chimed in on the family rift, admitting he doesn't talk to his grandchildren, quote, as much as he'd like before directly addressing Angie's divorce. Well, yeah, it's not 100% known, but you're kind of a deadbeat dad. So I would assume you'd be a deadbeat grandpa. Quote, I wish they'd find a way to make peace. You know, I think the kids need some stability. I love the kids and I love my daughter. And I want Brad to step up to do, you know, what he has to do. End this nonsense. Sounds like he's talking about himself. We know that Angelina Jolie and uh, John Voight don't really get along. Mm -hmm. Although my favorite John Voight performance was in the 1997 J-Lo movie Anaconda. Angie and Brad have been Love that movie. entangled in a messy divorce for years, mainly hashing it out over their French vineyard. No. The two were together for 12 years, but only married for two. The Maleficent star filed for divorce in 2016, and the two were legally declared single in 2019. Here's the funny part. Is he cheated on Jennifer Aniston with um, Angelina Jolie? And whoa, breaking news. That relationship didn't work. You're telling me that when you marry the side chick that it doesn't work? What a concept. They share six children, 23-year-old Maddox, 20-year-old Pax. 19-year-old Zahara, 18-year-old Shiloh, and 16-year-old twins Vivian and Knox. In 2022, the actress was granted sole physical custody of their minor children. Here's what I want to know is how bad of a dad Brad is and how much she's turned the kids against him. In her interview with Vogue India in 2020, Angie explained why she decided to file for divorce, telling the magazine, quote, I separated for the yeah. well-being of my family. It was the right decision. I continue to focus on their healing. Some have taken advantage of my silence and the children see lies about themselves in the media. But I remind Always got to bring the kids in. And then that they know their own truth and their own minds. Mm -hmm. In fact, they are six very brave, very strong young people. Since the split, some of their children have chosen to change their names. Shiloh reportedly filed to drop her dad's last name going from Shiloh Jolie Pitt to simply Shiloh Jolie in July after her 18th birthday. I've dated girls with daddy issues and one of them changed their last name from uh, their dad's last name to their mom's last name. And when that happens, I'm telling you, they hate their father. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Speaking of dads. The Somebody Save Me music video is out. And I did watch the thing. I, I watched it in entirety, and I don't think I can do it again. Eminem's daughter is admitting she had a very emotional reaction to his latest music. It's so weird how grown up Haley is. Remember hearing about him trying to burn down his wife's house and then being like, I love you, Haley. Haley Jade Scott revealed on the August 23rd episode of her podcast, Just a Little Shady, mm. that some of the tracks on the rapper's latest album, The Death of Slim Shady, Coup de Grasse, made her cry. She makes the revelation while talking to co-host Brittany Edney about the music video for Somebody Save Me featuring Jelly Roll, which dropped on August 21st. I don't know. I'm not trying to sound like a contrarian or a shock jock, but I don't really like Eminem that much. Like I like him, but I listen to his new music and I'm like, it's okay. It's not bad, but it's not 2002. Speaking of things I watched this past week, which I guess I'll say watch, but like I refuse to watch again. The Somebody Save Me music video mm. is out. Yeah. And I did watch the thing. All right. This video is just going to play it for another three minutes. Moving on, 856-49-Hoppy. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Speaking of dads. 
ASAP Rocky just dropped a relatable parenting confession. Mm. He gets tired of watching his kids' shows on repeat, too. Yeah. I don't know if you know I got a vasectomy, so I never have to deal with that. But I'll probably die alone. In Billboard's September cover story, the rapper Joe T is overwatching Coco Melon on repeat with his and Rihanna's sons, two-year-old Rizza and one-year-old Riot, mm. teasing, quote, that sh- is driving me nuts. Got don't it. tell my girl I said that. I'm totally joking. I don't give a Yeah, he's like, uh, actually, Rihanna's going to be mad I said that. She's tired of it, too, probably. Mm. Rihanna and ASAP might be at their wit's end with the animated show, but they do have their family routine on lock. Yeah. Quote, it's crazy how we find balance with our chaotic schedules. Yeah, they seem like they're a legit marriage. Maybe there's a little bit of cheating, but they seem like a good relationship. The relationship is going great, he wow, said. Wow, they said relationship after I said relationship. The relationship is going great, he said before gushing over Riri. I don't think there's a more perfect person because when the schedules are hectic, she's very understanding of that. Mm-hmm. And when the schedule's freed up, that's when you get to spend the most time together. Yeah. It's all understanding and compatibility. Though ASAP and Rihanna may be one of the most famous celebrity couples, the rapper told Billboard he wants their kids to have a normal childhood. Good luck with that. In fact, he even pulled up a video of... Never have them in public then. Rizza playing in the streets of New York. Quote, they're still human. They're human beings, he said. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the little ones are already daddy's boys. When Access Hollywood, Scott Evans chatted with the Umbrella singer in December, she revealed her sons are obsessed with her dad. That's good. Wow, you got Angelina Jolie trying to turn her kids against them. Mm-hmm. But uh, at least you have Rihanna. She's good. I loved him differently as a dad. Yeah. This, this is, yeah, this is major, major, like, yeah. uh, it's a turn on. It's just like, Yeah, wow. it is. What? You know, they probably have quickie sex because the kid's like, I want to play. And he's like, give me two minutes. What a leader. What a great, patient, loving. Yeah. And my kids are obsessed with him. Got it. I'm just, I'm just a background. Like, I'm an extra. Yeah. Ah, yep. That's crazy to think about, Rihanna. Yep, it happens. Do you have kids? Not yet. Okay, no, no, no. so. Soon enough. Not to be in the background. It happens. It doesn't matter if it's girls or boys. They love their dad differently, and I love to see it. Yeah. Access also spoke to Riri at the launch of Fenty Hair in June, and yeah. she revealed what it's like having two little ones at home and cheekily revealed how they've inspired her highly anticipated ninth album. It is a new balance every single day, but it is the best adventure. They're so different. I didn't ex- didn't expect that. You know, it's like same two parents, pretty much the same year. All right. As much as I love Rihanna, she's boring me. Moving on. No! Happy Hot Topic! Speaking of boring... Taylor Swift is singing the praises of Charlie XCX amid fan rumors the two are embroiled in a feud. If Taylor Swift is complimenting somebody, you know it's legit, because she almost never does. After Charlie released the single Sympathy is a Knife off her hit album Brat, fans started speculating that there's a rift between the two musicians because of the lyrics. The song mentions the musician feeling insecure about another woman in her orbit. Also... It seems like Taylor Swift hates men then because you never really hear her trashing other women unless it's Katy Perry. (laughs) So with Charlie currently engaged to George Daniel of the 1975, fans speculate that the song references Swift's past relationship with the band's lead singer, Maddie Healy. All righty. We've been doing a show for almost 80 minutes and we're going to move on to this. Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey's podcast just got a major upgrade. Hell yeah. E! News has confirmed the Kelsey brothers have signed a new deal for their New Heights podcast with Amazon's Wondery. The agreement is said to run for three years and is worth over $100 million. A lot of people will be super jealous of them being like, oh, they're NFL players. Blah, 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 blah. Celebrities and famous people will always have the upper hand mm-hmm. when it comes to making money in podcasting but it should be influential because radio is in a tough spot nobody under 27 listens to the radio I'm just saying keep grinding guys and finally Whoa! Happy hot topic! what's going on with this moron Lizzo reveals she's taking a gap year after her previous comments about quitting the music industry yeah 
The 36-year-old announces that she is taking a year off to focus on herself in this... I thought she was taking the whole life of being in music off. I thought she was gone forever. Oh, that's right. She's a narcissist that uh, harasses everybody around her and she doesn't want to go away. August 25th Instagram video with the caption quote, I'm taking a gap year and protecting my peace. I do find her attractive though from the back. Spank that. Also, uh, it looks like she takes Ozempic. She lost a lot of weight. The Grammy winner released... Which there was a lot of weight to lose. ...released her fourth studio album, Special, in July 2022. Mm. And aside from recording the song Pink for the 2023 Barbie movie, yeah. she has not released any new music since. And guess what? The world's been fine. Lizzo's gap year announcement comes after the singer faced a lawsuit last year by three of her former dancers. That's why she's taking a year off, because she wants to sweep that under the rug. She doesn't care about, oh, I need a mental health break. No, you're trying to sweep it under the rug. And then you're finally, you're finally losing weight because you want to like look different so you can go, oh, when I was harassing people, that's when I was fat. In the August 2023 lawsuit, three of her former dancers sued for allegedly creating an abusive work environment yeah. and weight shaming them. Lizzo later denied these claims in an Instagram statement calling the dancers' accusations, quote, sensationalized tales. I would believe them. You seem a little obnoxious. You seem like that drunk girl outside of a bar in Ybor City at 2 a.m. like, oh my God, where's the pizza? And adding at the time, Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, yeah. but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable. It wasn't your intention, but you did, probably. Or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. That's all mumbo jumbo you can say after the fact, but we know you did it because you're a repulsive human being. Months later, in a March 29th Instagram post, mm. Lizzo announces her plans to quit music yeah. as a result of the criticism from fans amid the lawsuit. At the time, it must have just been her time of the month when she made that video because no one believed it. And in one of these outfits, she looks like a human loofah. Lawsuit. At the time, she writes, quote, I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. Yeah. All I want is to make music and make people happy and- You know how everybody was kind of making fun of you? That's how you treat other people. That's how it feels. You get a taste of your own medicine. Help the world be a little better than how I found it. Ah, uh, whatever. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. Wow. You finally- read the room this has been happy hour now it's time to play the goodbye music tick tock clocks a joke we're playing cruel pranks hoppy's hour almost done feels like robbery and banks ryan hoppy on the mic dropping wisdom then streams syndicated sorrow now it's time to shatter dreams oh the happy hour is coming to a close radio waves fading like a wilting rose laughter and joy dissolving in the air but we'll keep the rhythm oh life's just so unfair But the laughter's growing dim Eardrums mixing hoppy light fingers without rings DHX to FM, shoutouts hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh, the happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Phone lines buzzing, but the laughter's growing dim Drums missing, hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM, shoutouts hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh, the happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Clockwork to a show And now it's time to face the silence Like a TV on snow Riot Hoppy held the mic With humor so divine The void left in our hearts Wider than a canyon line Line Empty speakers silent I become to an end Like a roller coaster stopping Round the river's bend 
Hobbies, jokes, and jabs, these are daily grind Now silence louder than the thoughts we can't rewind Oh, the hobby hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair The hobby hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Happy hour. Happy hour. It's time for Happy in the morning. Ryan Happy Radio.com. Like that? And, and like that? He's gone. Happy hour is now. Happy hour is now over. <laughs> Happy hour is now over.